I hate doing thumbnails. They're actually kind of painful. Not gonna lie. I just came up with this concept on a whim. I am not prepared at all. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things. If you're new here, hi, my name is Monica and this is my channel where I talk about books mostly. Sometimes I throw in a movie review. Hint, hint, go watch my Dune movie review. Gosh, it's hot. I don't know why it's so hot in here, it's like cold outside. I'm trying not to touch my hair so much in videos, it's really not working out for me. So as I said in the intro, I just kind of came up with this video idea on a whim just because I was looking at my shelves at books that I haven't read and I noticed that um, mostly I do book, I do books, <laughs> I do not do books, mostly I do all of my reading on online now, like I do mostly audio but I also do my Kindle, um, you know. To read uh, basically because this situation is running out of hand and we're running out of space and also you know trying to lower my carbon footprint and be a bit more minimalist when it comes to books it's less expensive also for me so I was looking through the books that I have and I realized that the least amount of books that I have to read are science fiction books probably because I read them so much. But I wanted to show you anyway the science fiction books that I haven't read that are on my shelves and I wanted to make it like a project to read these books because it, wouldn't it be cool if I'd be like all the sci-fi on my shelves are read, you know? Also, I'm not including um, anthologies here because I'm doing a whole other video on anthologies because I got into like this wormhole of buying, <coughs> excuse me, of buying anthologies and short story collections and then never reading them because I don't actually like reading short stories and yet I own like seven or eight books of short stories but we'll get to that later. These are all the sci-fi books that I haven't read that are currently on my shelves and I might declutter one of them, we'll see. I'm just gonna take them off the top. The first one I have is actually one that I'm really excited for and it's called Tentacle and it's by Rita Indiana. And this is described as a post-apocalyptic Santo Domingo, an electric novel with a big appetite and brave vision plunging headfirst into questions of climate change, technology, te technology? technology, Yoruba ritual, queer politics, poverty, sex, colonialism, and contemporary art. This sounds amazing. I got this a while ago. I haven't read it, mostly because, I, like I said, I've fallen out of love or I've fallen out of favor of reading books physically, but this is definitely something that I want to get to and something that is staying on my shelves and I'm really proud to have on my shelves. And I really want to recommend because there's a lot of science fiction that is being published in Spanish and not translated and when I do find that is one that is translated, I want to recommend it to you because this is definitely by a POC author and it's actually a translated work from Latin America and that is something that I hold very dear to my heart and I hope that I can recommend this to you sooner rather than later. Next up we have a book which was back when I was like buying books just to buy them and I bought this book because it went on sale and it's the special edition and it's bright and white and has blue sprayed edges and it's The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders. Now I've heard the I've heard a lot of bad things about this book honestly and that's the reason I'm not picking it up. I kind of want to find it in audio because it is kind of a chunky book. It's uh, it's almost 500 pages, it's 490 pages. So um, I don't know, this book is about a planet where the sun is always hitting one side and the other one is always like in the cold and it's sub-zero temperatures and then a girl from the side of the sun is um, exiled to the side where there is no sun, <laughs> where there is no sunlight and she has to make friends with the frost enemies. It sounds good but I've heard really bad things about it, that's kind of why I haven't been reading it. But I do want to read it, I do want to get to it because who knows, usually I really like books that people don't like so maybe I'll love it and I'll recommend it to you all, who knows. The next book I have was actually a recommendation from one of my good friends here on Booktube, Nate Connor, and that is The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. Now this is another climate change book. This is a book about um, basically destroying the world because that's <laughs> what we do in science fiction. 
I actually um, had heard Connor talk about this book. I think his dad recommended it to him or something or gave gifted it to him. And I looked up the synopsis online. I really liked it. And then I saw it at a bookstore and my husband being the most beautiful, wonderful person that he is bought it for me. And yet I haven't read it yet. Again, I probably haven't read most of these books because I haven't found the audio version of them and I prefer to read my books in the audio, but I think I think I'm going to I think I want to make a dent in these in this in this pile. <laughs> in this pile simply because, you know, again, it's just like nice to look at your shelves and see your books being read and not just sitting there waiting for you, <laughs> you know? Next up, I don't I think it was Rachel from the Shades of Orange that recommended this book. I'm not sure, but it's War of AI by Ishan Pandey. And this book just looks amazing. It's about a world where there's an AI, the, the computers run the world basically, and everything is good, or so it seems. There is this mechanic named Azarel that doesn't feel so comfortable with the way machines are running the world. So um, it seems that they are going to try to take the world back from the machines. And there's illustrations in the here. Just, that's just magical. This is the one that I think I'm gonna get rid of because I tried to read it, couldn't get into it, and it's been compared to one of my least favorite books that I read, I think last year, yeah, which is um, Daphne du Maurier's Jamaica Inn. This is um, Skyward Inn. I've got a reader's advanced copy or an arc of it, and this is just basically a bunch of people walk into a bar. <laughs> A bunch of aliens walk into a bar and um, they start talking about a war and what really happened during the war and did they ever really win the war at all? It sounds interesting, but I just couldn't get into it. Um, I might, but I don't want to give this away because it's an arc and I don't get a lot of those. And also, who am I going to give it to? You know, like <laughs> it's an arc. So I might just keep it. I might give it another shot. I do have this one in audio, but I just haven't been able to get into it. Next up, we have three <laughs> three books by the same author and oh i bought two of these knowing that i wasn't probably not going to read them i've got jeff vanderveer venice underground and jeff vandermeer trike and afterward i don't know what these are about i think this is about finding a, tr a true love and i don't know but i just saw the covers and I was like, I want to buy more Jeff Vandermeer books. I don't know why, because honestly, the only book of his that I've enjoyed is Born. But I've loved Born so much that I keep trying to recapture the magic. And honestly, these, these look beautiful on my shelf. He has the best cover designs. And along with that, I have Dead Astronauts, which is incredible. It's so fucking beautiful. But it just kind of don't want to read it because I feel this is going to be like an acid trip gone wrong and it's not going to give me the born feels you know and this is supposed to be like a prequel to born because the dead astronauts are in born so yeah um I'll read it one day I'll read it one day when I'm feeling good which you know we're getting there we're getting there then we have the two newest addition to my um shelves I actually bought these because they were cheap and I was feeling down. So I did some retail therapy. The first one is Monument 14 by Emmy LeBourne. This is about a um, apocalypse basically. And it's about some kids stranded in a mall. I already started it. It starts off really, really good. But again, I haven't been into reading physical books. So I'm kind of putting it off until I'm more into the idea of reading a physical format book but yeah this is this sounds like a lot of fun this reminds me of the new version of dawn of the dead you know where they go to the mall and i really want to i really want to read it. it it it's captured me and i don't know there's something fun about watching the world burn yeah because usually in sci-fi we already burned the world this is about the burning of the world then we have this one, which is, the cover is nothing that I would pick up, but I read the synopsis and it sounded so cool. This is about a girl named Hannah. She grows up hidden by her mother in a secret room of the Bioship 
Cle Cyclo, not Cleo, <laughs> Cyclo, until the day her mother is simply gone, along with the entire crew. Cyclo tells her that she was abandoned, but she's certain her mother, her mother wouldn't leave her there to die. And Hannah isn't ready to die yet. She's never really had a chance to live. And then we have Fen, is supposed to die. He and a crew of hired mercenaries are there to monitor Cyclo as she expires. And the payment for the suicide mission will mean Fen's sister is able to live. But when he meets Hannah, he's not, he's not sure how to save them both. This sounds really like 2005 YA. But I was drawn in. I don't know. Something about it drew me in. Like the idea that this girl lives in like this toxic environment and she can't go out and this boy is in a suicide mission so it's yeah it's really hunger game-ish don't 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 come at me don't come at me and the last one that i have to show you is from the bounder series this is the tundra trials this is bounders number two now i read bounders which i have down here i read bounders when i read uh sci-fi books written by monica so this is the second book in the series and i haven't gotten to it simply because i haven't had time but if you saw my video, which I will link up above and down below, it's I it's one of it was basically my favorite book that I read for that video, and I bought the sequel, and they look so pretty together on the shelf, so shiny. Um, yeah, Bounders is all about these children, these neurodivergent children that were raised to bound. Bound basically means to travel between stars without the need for a spaceship, and they get taken to this academy to learn how to be the perfect little soldiers and um, colonize other planets. But things aren't really what they seem once they get there. So this is just really a fun um, middle grade series. I love it. I love the representation in it. And I would highly recommend that you pick up Founders and maybe pick up the sequel. And that's it. Those are all the sci-fi books that I haven't read on my shelves. Have you read any of these books? Would you recommend that I read any of them really fast or like soon? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but would you recommend that I read any of them soon? Um, uh, I would love to know your thoughts and which of them calls out to you more. And do you think I will ever find another book by Jeff Vandermeer that is like born? So yeah, without anything left to say, I bid you adieu and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.